Lesson three, masks in Adobe Camera Roll. I'm gonna to try to contain my excitement. This is my favorite part of the entire course. In fact, this is my favorite app or feature set from all of Adobe. Right here, this is it. Let me tell you quickly what I'm gonna tell you for the next week, all right, week three. Here's what you need to know. Bridge plus Adobe Camera Raw plus Photoshop. Bridge, Adobe Camera Raw, and Photoshop are a family. They're a family. I'm gonna say something shocking. Lightroom is a house guest. I need you to understand that from the start. Bridge, Adobe Camera Raw, and Photoshop are built to and do in fact run seamlessly together. Lightroom is a house guest. There are certain things Lightroom doesn't have access to or get allowed to do. It's family, it's family, it's different. Part one, part two. There's the Adobe Camera Raw proper, which I'm going to discuss this week. I mentioned it at the end of last week's bonus videos, right? As opposed to the fake Adobe Camera Raw filter in Photoshop. There's a real Adobe Camera Raw. What makes it real? Well, it's non-destructive enhancing of selected areas in an image. That's it. It's non-destructive. That's key. That's the key difference between the real Adobe Camera Raw, which I keep calling proper. Adobe don't use that word. The real Adobe Camera Raw versus the fake Camera Raw filter that you find in Photoshop. The real is always non-destructive. You do not have to be taught how not to destroy data in your images. If you're using Adobe Camera Raw, the real one, no harm can befall your image. In my Adobe Camera Raw course, I have a full-fledged course, another four-week course that unpacks Adobe Camera Raw completely. And I tell you there that Adobe Camera Raw saves the baby, right? Your image is your baby. And you don't have to be taught how to be a perfect parent in order to save the baby. Now, in Photoshop, you do. It's a jungle. And if you were to take your newborn into the jungle, shame on you. You know that. You'd have to be taught how jungle training, how to save the baby. But you don't have to be taught that in the Adobe Camera Raw engine. I'm going to say that word, engine. Adobe have a word for Adobe Camera Raw. It's a plug-in. A plug-in. A plug-in means it's not something you can buy separately. You can't go online and buy Adobe Camera Raw. What happens is you get Adobe Camera Raw. It comes as a, a plug. I'm looking around on my desk. It's a it's a plug-in. I don't I don't just buy this. It comes with something. It's a plug-in for my Adobe apps, particularly Lightroom, Bridge, and Photoshop, as I've already mentioned. Adobe Camera Raw is separate. It's a plug-in. It works inside, underneath. It's the engine under each one of those apps' hoods for non-destructive image editing. If it's in Photoshop, why do I need it here? Well, because Photoshop doesn't allow you to access certain features. And you're going to see today that I can batch process. I can process 500 wedding photos in a click with Adobe Camera Raw that I in Bridge or Lightroom, but not with Photoshop. So batch processing is a big separation between the pair, Adobe Camera Raw in Bridge and Lightroom versus Photoshop. Batch processing separates the two. Well, what separates these two? What separates these two is something that is well known to you Lightroom users, and that is the catalog. The catalog. Lightroom, Lightroom features, claims it's a feature, 
something called the catalog. Your edits don't happen automatically to your images. Instead, they happen uh, in between. In a temporary, they call it proxy. It happens in a temporary proxy called the catalog. Bridge doesn't use a catalog. Bridge edits the images with Adobe Camera Raw, the same engine, but it edits them directly. There's no catalog necessary. More on that probably near the end. Are you taking notes? Adobe Camera Raw is non-destructive. I can run it on batches of images. Okay. When I run Adobe Camera Raw on selected areas of an image in order to enhance. Let's just get into it and have a look, okay? If I have an image, I'm showing this to you via Bridge. I'm in Bridge. You can see it there. I'm in Bridge. But I'm going to edit the file in the equivalent of Lightroom's develop module. I'm going to open this in Adobe Camera Raw. That's today's, this week's, in fact, lesson on masks. Open in Camera Raw. Now, there's a lot to talk about. All these sliders, this interface, these panels. There's a lot to talk about that I'm not going to talk about this week. That is, is on its own an entire Adobe Camera Raw course. This week, we're going to talk about masks in Adobe Camera Raw. More on that in a moment. I'd like to select something. I'm going to say subject. Now, I'm going quickly because I'm not teaching. Whoa, what? And just like that, it selected a specific selection, a specific mask, a specific area so that I can do some editing. Now, when I say a specific area, here's what Adobe Camera Raw excels at, okay? It excels at local edits. An edit that's here, but not over there. That's an Adobe word, local edits versus what? Versus global edits. There are times when you'll want to edit an area, right? That's why we use masks. It's to edit an area and not the other areas. So it's used for selective or local editing. I'm editing here, but not there. Uh, how do I do it? Well, I do it, here we go, with a mix of artificial intelligence buttons and your intelligence tools. It's done with a mix, take notes, of buttons and tools. The buttons are artificial intelligence. The tools are user intelligence. You. Buttons and tools. And this mix of buttons and tools in order to select beautifully for enhanced editing of particular areas, I call the killer tools. They're killer tools. They're awesome tools. The buttons and the tools. The buttons that are artificial intelligence, but amazing. And the manual user interface tools, your intelligence coming involved, mixed together so that, yes, I hear your brains buzzing so that they can be modified. Can these selections be modified? Yes. That was a big question that burned in our hearts when we were working in Photoshop, right? Many of you asked it. If I'm editing a Photoshop selection and I, whose job is it to save it? It's your job. And I do my job and I save it as a saved selection in Photoshop, a channel. Can I modify it? Yes. Can these be modified? Yes. Whose job is it to save them? It's the programs. Wait, what? It's not your job anymore. Wait, what? Part of the love of Adobe Camera Raw. 
is that when you make a selection, they're automatically saved. It's not your job anymore. A mask, a selection, is automatically saved for a specific area, for a specific enhancement that you can modify. You can modify the selection, the mask, and you can, wow, this is mind blowing. You can always re-modify whatever modifications you've ever run in the history of the photo. Whether you took it 20 years ago and modified it, or 20 years from now, you can re-modify it because nothing is set in stone. It's non-destructive, meaning you can always go back to any point in time. It's taking all that convoluted editing mind space from Photoshop and simplifying it in a very big way. You don't need a history panel. It's automatic. You don't need channels. It's automatic. How do I save them? Forget about it. It's automatic. How do I apply them to multiple images? I'll show you. By the way, oh my gosh, we'll get to it. They can be modified and automatically saved. That's important. But these amazing selections can also be applied using presets. I'm going to show you how you can create a preset to automatically select any subject in any image. You don't even have to go out and ask it to. Wait, what? And mind-blowingly, when you apply a preset, I'll show you how you can set a preset, if you choose, so that automatically applies these magical selections when you download your photos from the camera. You don't even have to go in and do it. What? You've been going in and doing it. You've been working too hard. But there's a way to apply presets, therefore selections, automatically as soon as you download the photos. Would that save you some time? This is awesome. My favorite feature set from any Adobe product. This is the killer tool of killer tools. It's phenomenal. And I can do it all in Adobe Camera Raw with Bridge with no cumbersome catalog. Now my Lightroom users are, are frightened right now but they are so curious, aren't you? Because you've had issues or you've heard of issues with the cumbersome catalog from Lightroom. It can be corrupted. You can lose it. You've got to keep track of it. It's kind of a nemesis. But you don't have to worry about any of that. If you use Bridge with Adobe Camera Raw, they go together like mother and son, mother and daughter. Bridge with Adobe Camera Raw, married to Photoshop. They're a family. I'm going to prove that out. Let me transition into bonus video one by showing you an example. I'm not in Lightroom. For right now, this week, I'm not in Lightroom. Next week, I will be. But for now, this week, have an open mind, an open heart, and study with open eyes how things look. How things look over here in Adobe Camera Raw. Now, re remember, there's a full course on this. I'm opening your eyes, your heart, and your mind. Here we go. Hmm, I'm looking. I'm seeing sliders. I'm seeing something called the histogram. Lightroom users are, are well aware of it. I'm seeing something called a profile profile you're not all familiar with. It's a camera color fixer. In fact, it's an automatic color calibrator for a camera. It's built right there. There's white balance. Some of you 
use white balance. It's it's really honestly ought to be called gray balance, but I'll take it because that's what we've learned. White balance, white balance, gray balance. Exposure. I know I can fix my exposure or change it. Contrast. Highlights. Highlights. Highlights are the almost brightest things. Well, what are the brightest things? Well, look, I'm going to skip one slider. Whites. Whites are the very, very brightest tones. Highlights are the almost brightest tones. Go up and look with your eyes at the histogram. And it's saying, hey, this image has a lot of mountains on the right side, on the bright side, right side, bright side. Look how tall the mountains are on the right side, on the bright side, right there. And if I hover, I'm not clicking, but if I hover over the brightest of brights, when I hover, look right in this area here when I hover. It says, those are the whites. Those are the whitest whites. And as I slide, I'm not clicking. I'm just moving my cursor. It goes, and these are the highlights. The almost whites. And I keep sliding. And these are the mid-tones. It doesn't say that, does it? It says exposure. The middle area gets the, the force felt when you play with exposure. The mid-tones get the touch deeply. I'm going to keep sliding. Then the shadows. Are the shadows my darkest darks? No. They're the almost darkest darks. The darkest darks are the blacks. Whites, highlights, exposure, blacks. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. Shadows, then blacks. But I can look at them right here. There they are. Exposure, middle push. Emphasis in the midtones. Contrast, I didn't see that up there. No, because contrast takes the almost whites and the almost darks. Contrast takes the highlights and the shadows, but not the brightest brights and not the darkest darks. It takes the highlights and the shadows and it just pushes those apart from each other, creating more contrast. That's what's actually happening. It's pushing two sliders at the same time. Contrast is pushing the highlight slider at the same time that it pushes the shadow slider apart from each other or nearer each other, depending upon what direction I move that slider. But there you go, highlights, the almost whites, shadows, the almost darks, whites, the brightest brights, blacks, the darkest darks, and there they are as sliders. A whole lot more on that in the Adobe Camera Raw course. But I want you to just notice that there are sliders. Now, I'm going to open at the bottom of Adobe Camera Raw, there's a button that says Open Object. What that ought to say is Open in Photoshop, please, as a smart object. That's what it ought to say. List it out if the button had enough space. Open Object is shorthand for please open this raw file, this photo, original photo, in Photoshop as a smart object. Thank you. Now, if you don't see open object, hold your shift key. Because when you hold your shift key, the word open, which says open this image in Photoshop, but not as a smart object, just open it. That button open can be changed if you hold the shift key. Just hold the shift key and it'll say open as an object instead. I'm going to open this as an object to show you the difference between the real Adobe Camera Raw and the fake filter in Photoshop. I'm also going to prove a point that Adobe Camera Raw with Bridge is they're in the family with Photoshop and Lightroom is a house guest. You're going to see that right now. Here we go. Open as an object. It leaves bridge. It opens with another family member. We're now sitting and having dinner with dad. Mom bridge. 
son or daughter, Adobe Camera Raw, are now sitting at the table with dad. Work with me on my analogy here. Now, Photoshop has launched. I'm still not doing anything. It has opened my image in Photoshop the way I edited it. And I want you to notice that in the Layers panel, there's that little branding iron. There's that little mark that represents that my child, my image is safe in the jungle. Bug repellent, bubble wrap, wrapped in a cage, whatever illustration you want to use. No harm can befall my baby, this image. That's a smart object. I didn't have to make it a smart object when I opened it in Photoshop. It came in as a smart object. Now I can do some editing here in Photoshop, add some extra layers, add some type and other things. But the smartest way for me to go back and edit it is not under the fake camera raw filter. I'm going to open it though so you can look. In the camera raw filter, is there a cropping tool? No. Is there something I, I promised you will be there called the snapshots panel button? No. I told you those are visual representations that I'm in the fake. I'm going to hit cancel. Even though I have a smart object, that's not the best way to edit the original raw file, my original baby. Instead, watch. I'm going to double click the bubble wrap. Double click the icon inside the thumbnail. Double click. And it takes you back to Adobe Camera Raw proper. You're in the real McCoy. You're in the real app. How do you know at a glance? Oh, look. There's a cropping tool. Oh, look. There's a snapshots panel button. Just quickly. Now, there are lots of other changes, but I'm just quickly, you can see that. And if I go to my mask panel, I can undo anything I ever did in the history of this file. Even though I've already opened the baby in Photoshop, which is on its own a destructive image editor. No, no, I've saved the baby in a big way, in a really big way. And if I hit OK, now it doesn't say open anymore, does it? No, because it says, I know that Photoshop sent you. Dad said, here, pass the mashed potatoes. Dad said, here. And if I say, OK, say, OK, Dad. And I'm right back into Photoshop with that change made. Let's do it again. I'm double clicking the icon. I'm going to apply a preset, one of the tools on the sidebar looks like two circles overlapping and when I hover it says it's presets oh, okay presets now I don't know what's going to happen but I know I have some look and I'm just hovering Lightroom users are very accustomed to this I'm just hovering as I go downward just to see what it would do what effect might it have oh that's weird let's do that one just so that we can see that something's changed I'm going to say okay I clicked it I click OK, I'm back. I'm back to Photoshop. I didn't make the change in Adobe Camera Raw. Well, not the fake. I did it in the real Camera Raw. I'm going to go back in. Even if I save this Photoshop file and I open it in 20 years, I can still re-edit. Back to the original. Now I'm going to click on that Snapshots panel above the presets. And say, will you go back to the very first time I opened the file or did something? Ooh, it looks like there's a line across the top. Oh, that's a power line. Then I did something and I did something, different sizes. Oh, yuck. And I did something. And I don't think these are improvements. But eventually, ah, I got happy. Look at all those different versions that I, hey, somebody bought it. Somebody bought it just like that. Now, you don't know this yet, but I'm going to do some cloning. It's not heavy-duty cloning, like I might have to go into Photoshop for. But I'm just going to go 
across that power line, sh click and shift click, and do a little retouch there. Power line's gone. Instead of Command S, save, I'm going to do, or instead of Control S, save on the PC. And I'm going to do Command Shift S. It's like Save As. Control Shift S on the PC. Save As. I'm going to save this one as No Power Line. I just made a change. And I'm going to say OK. And then when I get back to Photoshop, there's no power line. All right, that's the way Photoshop plays. By the way, when I have a smart object and I double click, Photoshop now wisely won't take me to the fake filter. It takes me to the real Adobe Camera Raw proper. I'm going to close this image. I'm not going to save it. I could, but I'm not going to save it. Now, I'm in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm looking at various saves I've gotten from Adobe Camera Raw. Perfect. I'm going to say, oh, there's a button at the bottom. It says, Rick, you've updated. Alert, alert. There's been some update to, to the Adobe Camera Raw proper software since the last time you saved this. There's been some updates. And if I click it, it will apply the update, the possible noise filter improvements or new tools that I might access if I click that button. Something happens and I can go, it, there are supposedly improvements and I'm re-editing. Now that I see I've got, I might have new sliders that show up. I might have new tools that exist. I might have new features since the last time I edited that photo that will show up. I can save that as new feature set. I don't have to name this anything in particular. It's now stored in this image. And I'm not going to open it in Photoshop again. I'm just going to hit done. Done. What I want you to take away is this. When I edit with Adobe Camera Raw, and eventually take it to Photoshop, my baby is safe. Normally when you take an image into Photoshop, you have to be worried about destruction. It doesn't happen with Adobe Camera Raw. My interface is Bridge. Your interface used to be Lightroom or may still be Lightroom, but it looks like this. When I edit the images, I don't go to the develop module like I would in Lightroom. I edit it under the file menu in Camera Raw proper. Camera Raw. Command or Control R. The workflow is simple. Look at them in Bridge. Select them in Bridge. Edit them in Adobe Camera Raw. If you have to open them in Photoshop for one of the five compelling reasons, go for it, but your baby is still safe. That's the way it works. Now, oh, by the way, do I have to save these images or these changes into a separate catalog? No. So now let's play. I'm going to take a photo and move it to Lightroom Classic. What I'm doing now is I'm opening Lightroom Classic, and I have to, trust me, import. I can't just start working on the photo like I do in Lightroom or Bridge. I have to import that photo. Right now it's saying, what do you want to do? And it's waiting for me. It's waiting for me to look at the bottom corner. Import. I have to import knowledge of that photo into Lightroom so that it can write data into the catalog. I'm going to spend some time importing. If it's just one image, no big deal. But if it's 500 wedding photos, it's a big deal. That takes time. This bridge image, edited with Camera Raw, is now imported into Lightroom. And I'm looking at it and whatever else I imported in the library, it's the equivalent of bridge. Looks like a grid. 
but now I want to edit it. In Lightroom, I have to go to the Develop module. Now work with me. Does this look familiar to you? There's the histogram with all the same words. There's my camera profile. Here's my white balance, although it abbreviates it WB. Here are all the same sliders, exposure and contrast, highlight shaft. It's all the same. Why? Because the engine under both of these is the same Adobe Camera Raw. Now, I don't see the presets panel over on the side. No, because they've moved those things across the bottom of the histogram. There's your cropping tool. I don't see the snapshots panel. Trust me, snapshots are in here. But they've moved and they've moved the presets panel to the other side of the screen. So there's your presets panel. And I'm hovering. But wait, it's taking some time. It's taking some time. Well, I'll, I'll be patient. I'll wait for it. Let's try something else. Use a preset. I'm just taking some time. There it goes. Taking some time. There you go. But I could do it a little longer. Why? It's going through the catalog. It's not editing directly. It's accessing, interfacing with the catalog. Now, I'm going to make a change. Let's make a change. Let's make it very pink very blue. I'm just making a change. And if I want to actually make sure that it's, we'll talk more in week four, but let's have a little fun. Hey, this photo, I would like to edit in Photoshop. That's open. A, a moment ago, four minutes ago, you saw me Edit this photo in Adobe Camera Raw. And at the bottom right, I had a button, an option to open into Photoshop, not as a smart object. Or some of you saw I could hold the shift key and it would say open object, open as a smart object in Photoshop. But this is open. Command O for, no, Command E. Mm, the shortcut doesn't make sense, but there it is. Open. But keep looking. And that is... Lightroom's version of open as a smart object in Photoshop. It's the same thing as open object in Camera Raw. I'm going to do it. Notice I made all that purpley look right here in the sliders that look like Lightroom's version of the sliders. But now my edits are showing up in Photoshop and good news as a smart object, I still have that little icon. I still have the icon. So far, so good. I can edit non-destructively forever and ever and ever. I don't have to be trained in jungle training to protect the baby. It's automatic. If I use either Lightroom or Bridge with Adobe Camera Raw, either one, what are the differences? The differences so far are the catalog. You have it with Lightroom. You don't have it with Bridge. Get it. Got it. Good. But here's the second big deal. Lightroom is a house guest, not a member of the family. And I'm going to prove it now. When I double click, I just came from Lightroom. When I double click the smart object icon to re-edit it, what does Photoshop send the job to? Is this Lightroom? Or is this Adobe Camera Raw? Oh, well, this is Adobe Camera Raw. So even if and when you edit in Lightroom and you tell Photoshop to open it, Photoshop says, thank you, house guest. But then when you tell Photoshop to re-edit the smart object non-destructively, it says, we'll take it from here. This is a family matter. And Photoshop resends even a Lightroom file, back to the real Adobe Camera Raw. Ooh, that's weird, but true. In week four, we'll talk about how it matters to you for your overall workflow. By the way, even though I edited it in Lightroom, 
and I opened it in Photoshop and I'm back here in Bridge, I still have access to all my go back in times. Whatever it was I saw earlier, I can go back and do. Shall I update it? I think I will. Can I go back to my sliders at any moment in time? Of course I can. And so on. Cancel. Close the Photoshop document. Quit Lightroom. Do you want to back up your catalog? Bridge users never see that. I don't have to worry about backing up my catalog. And why would I ever want to back up my catalog? Because it's it tends to corruption. So no, I'll skip it. I can go back to Bridge immediately. Boom. Drag and drop an image. And you are editing the real file. And notice, no import. Every other photo in that folder from that photo shoot right here live. Command R. Control R for my PC users. Every saved version. You get the idea. New feature set. Didn't I save that one just a moment ago with no wire in it? Bang. We're back. I say done. I'm not going to open it in Photoshop. So a big clue here is stay in the real Adobe Camera Raw for as long as you can before ever taking your baby into Photoshop even though there are indeed five compelling reasons to do so. Do as much as you can here, non-destructively. Where is here? My here is Bridge with Adobe Camera Raw. It's completely legit to make your here be Lightroom with a catalog. But I think you can see it's a bit more cumbersome. There are more steps. There's more time, and even if you were willing to spend that time, when you go to Photoshop and wisely save the baby and come back, even Photoshop won't send you back to Lightroom. Photoshop will send you back to Adobe Camera Raw. That's it for the intro. Now let's dig into some bonus videos, the first of which will be, let's look at the buttons and tools. Let's look at the buttons that are artificial intelligence selectors for your masks and the tools that help me interact with those selections to modify. And you're going to be reintroduced to our old friends, Shift and Option to add and subtract and intersect. Shift add, subtract, and intersect. Those three are how we modify, and they're going to come back here simply, more simply than Photoshop. I'll see you. Thank you for joining me in week three. I hope you enjoyed this first video. Right, right, watch it again. Write down big notes. You can see what we're up to. Right, Bridge, Adobe Camera Raw, and Photoshop are a big family. Lightroom's a house guest. There's Photoshop for real, I mean, Adobe Camera Raw for real, proper, and Adobe Camera Raw as a filter, not real. I can do selective edits here or there, local versus global, and then enhance those areas. I enhance those areas or select those areas with artificial intelligent buttons and user interface tools. Collectively, this mix of tools, I would call the killer tools, they are the killer tools. It's my favorite feature set in all of Adobe's apps, all of them. My selections are incredible and they're enhanced. They can always be modified. They're automatically saved. I can even save these modifications or these automatic selections as presets, apply them as batch processing to multiple photos at once, manually or even automatically when my images come off the camera. That's crazy. This is not Lightroom. Lightroom makes me work with a catalog. Adobe Camera Raw, while it's still the engine in Lightroom, does not compel me 
if I use Bridge to play with a catalog at all. And that family of Bridge, Adobe Camera Raw, and Photoshop play with each other. They keep work in the family. Even if Lightroom sent the smart object to Photoshop, Photoshop sends that rework back to the son or the daughter, Adobe Camera Raw, keeping that work in the family. That's everything. Good notes. Bonus one. At your leisure.